Late Edition, News at 10 with Ann Gownley. Sports with Beth Mensinger. And meteorologist Joe Garbacic. The man accused of shooting another man to death in February of 2013 in Hazleton will be headed to trial as jury selection is already underway. And it's our top story tonight. Good evening. This is WYLN's Late Edition, Greater Hazleton's only local news broadcast for Monday, August 11th, 2014. I'm Ann Gownley. An accused shooter is scheduled to head to trial in Luzerne County Court. 22-year-old Adamus Aries allegedly shot 19-year-old Angel Suarez Villalobos to death after an argument on February 23, 2013 in Hazleton. Jury selection is underway for the criminal homicide trial. Attorneys Allison Kashmarski and Hugh Taylor will be defending Arias. Assistant District Attorney Jill Matthews and Chester Dudick will, be, will be prosecuting the case. The trial will be heard by Judge David Lupus. No word when the trial will officially begin until jury selection is completed. A supervisor's meeting was held in Hazel Township where a local water problem, road repairs, and a new business opening were topics of discussion. WYLN's Julie Stefanovich was at tonight's meeting and has the story. The Hazel Township supervisors met this evening to give the public an update on the meeting that was held last week to discuss the Stockton water situation. Solicitor Charles Pedry said that PennVest recommended a new project called White Knight. It would allow the Hazelton Water Authority to apply for grants and loans. It would help the agency get funding to incorporate smaller areas such as Stockton. Without the funding, it would not be economically feasible to run a water line through the area. We also spoke with Supervisor Bill Gallagher on the matter. Just a discussion, informational meeting to see what options would be available uh, if there's grant money out there and both the Department of Agriculture and PennVest are going to be looking in to see what kind of funding we would be able to receive and pass over to the Hazleton City Authority first to do an engineering study to see the feasibility and cost of, uh, of doing a water project in Stockton and then in turn seeing if there would be money available to do the Stockton project but you're probably one to two years away on on anything that would be uh, locked in stone. Gallagher also gave us an update on the township summer road projects and the progress of a new car dealership that is set to open up in Hazel Township. But, uh, we got Hazel Township Boulevard done from uh, th Route 309 down to Mountain City uh, and we also did uh, 23rd Street from uh, Route 309 to Vine Street, which is probably one of the worst roads and one of the heaviest travel because of the high school and the school buses. So the, both of those roads were done. That was our biggest project this year. Uh, our road crew and subcontractors are still working on various areas. We're moving into the uh, hardware, uh, into Hollywood right now uh, with all the traffic uh, being used, people trying to avoid the beltway. They've started to put a... Uh, we're starting to have problems on Hollywood, so we're going to be doing some milling and paving on Hollywood Road. Uh, down behind all face, so I would expect some delays down there if you're using that. Started to break ground for the uh, the new car dealerships. Uh, the contractors are out there clearing the trees and starting to do uh, the necessary drainage work. I believe that uh, they're hoping to get a few of the buildings in before the, the weather turns. The next supervisor's meeting is scheduled for September 8th at 6 p.m. in the Commons Building. In Hazel Township, for W. Lens Late Edition, I'm Julie Stefanovich. LAG towing owner Leo Glodzik filed a list of reasons last week as to why he deserves to have his conviction overturned. Now, Luzerne County prosecutors gave reasons why they believe a judge should deny his appeal. Glodzik was suspended as Wilkes-Barre's exclusive towing contractor on May 31st of 2013. He was arrested on theft charges from pocketing bait money during an FBI sting operation in January of 2013. He was convicted on theft charges in May in Luzerne County Court. He is free on bail pending his appeal. Laboratory results are still pending on a man who died after Tamaqua police tasered him last week. 38-year-old Jose Polino Jr. died while en route to St. Luke's Hospital Miners Campus in Coaldale on Friday, August 8th. According to police, Polino was running around the parking lot of Fegley's Mini Market Friday around 4 a.m. shouting obscenities, then ran across the street to the Sunoco parking lot. Police say Polino was non-compliant and continued to act aggressively, when, and that is when they tased him. Schuylkill County Coroner 
responder Dr. David Moylan said an autopsy conducted at Lehigh Valley Hospital Cedar Crest was inconclusive. Polino's skin was examined extensively looking for hemorrhaging. Toxicology and microscopic samples were taken and sent to a laboratory. Investigators are still waiting on those results to determine the manner of death. The Pennsylvania State Police Major Case Team is continuing to investigate this incident. Saturday morning, Hazleton City Police were called to CMP store for an armed robbery. According to police, a man walked into the store wearing a Spider-Man mask and brandished a handgun. The man is described as being dark-skinned, standing five foot nine. The male fled the area on foot. No one was hurt during the incident. Police say he did get away with an undetermined amount of money. Anyone with information on this armed robbery, you are being asked to call the Hazleton Police Department by dialing 911. Just after 6 o'clock Monday morning, Hazleton police responded to a robbery in progress. According to the victims, they were approached by three Hispanic males in the parking lot near 51 West Juniper Street. One suspect pointed a handgun and removed property from the victims. The suspects then fled in a white color sedan south on Wyoming Street. Anyone with information on this incident is asked to call Hazleton police at 570-459-4940. A 28-year-old man from Brockton died over the weekend after his motorcycle crashed in Rush Township. Police say Zachary Hess lost control of his Honda motorcycle Friday evening on Lafayette Avenue, just east of Sean Avenue in hometown. Hess was taken to St. Luke's Hospital Miners Campus in Coaldale with serious injuries. He was pronounced dead in the emergency room. According to police, Hess was traveling east towards his sister's house in Lake Hotto after leaving his cousins just a short distance away. Witnesses, including Hess's brother, saw sparks coming from his motorcycle. Hess was thrown from the motorcycle after striking several trees. He was not wearing a helmet at the time of the crash. The accident is still under investigation. Shots were fired into a home on Chester Street in Wilkesbury shortly after midnight on Sunday. A 16-year-old male told police that he was on the porch when a black Dodge sedan with four occupants exited the vehicle and approached the house. The boy went inside the house, locked the doors, and called police. He then heard gunshots and the glass of the front storm door breaking. Authorities found shell casings at the scene, which were then processed as evidence. A man from Nashville, Tennessee, was arrested by Nanticoke police for trying to sell guns to children. 44-year-old Sean David Brin was charged by police with illegal possession of a firearm, receiving stolen property, drugs and paraphernalia possession, public drunkenness and related charges. Police say Brin was drunk on Patriot Square, peddling a stolen revolver to children. Brin set up shop by hanging women's purses on a bicycle handlebar and placing a plastic bottle filled with beer in the cup holder. A bag of synthetic marijuana was also found in his pocket. According to police, Brin's multiple state, multiple offense felony criminal history prohibits him from possessing a firearm. The incident began around 3 p.m. on Saturday. A resident called police after Bryn tried to sell them a 22 caliber revolver for $150. The gun was reported stolen from a home on South Prospect Street on August 5th. Magisterial District Judge Diana Malice set Bryn's bail at $75,000. A Nanticoke woman has been charged with stabbing her boyfriend during a domestic dispute. According to police, 23-year-old Beth Ann Bartle was arrested and charged with aggravated assault and two counts of simple assault. Police say just after 4 a.m. Saturday, they were dispatched to Agosta Drive after Bartle stabbed Sean Rosinski in the hand. The top of his hand was bleeding when police found Rosinski outside an apartment. Rosinski told police that Bartle stabbed him. Police found Bartle asleep in bed, and when she woke up, she told police that she had enough and wanted him to leave. She told police that when, re when he refused to leave, she got the knife and cut him. Bartle was arraigned Saturday morning and released on her own recognizance. Rosinski was treated at an area hospital for his wound. It was a scary situation late Saturday night as a car smashed into a house in the city of Hazleton. Hazleton police arrived on location on West Chapel Street to find the operator of a Chevy Trailblazer had fled on foot, leaving the SUV behind. The vehicle struck the side of the house, causing some cosmetic damage to the outside. Hazleton police were on location and assisted it and was assisted by the Hazleton Fire Department. If you have any information helpful to police, you are asked to call 911. 
A one car crash took the life of a 20 year old man this morning in Denison Township. The man was traveling southbound along State Route 437 when he crossed the center line and overcorrected crashing into a guardrail near Dixon Road. The vehicle flipped over the rail before coming to a stop. The accident happened around 5 a.m. Police said that speed definitely played a role in the crash. Both lanes of Route 437 were close to traffic between Tunnel and Honey Hole Roads while police investigated the incident. The road was reopened around 9.30 a.m. Authorities have not released the name of the victim pending notification to his family. United States Senator Pat Toomey is working on a bill that will help veterans across the country. Today, our Gary Perna spoke with Senator Toomey about his efforts in Washington. United States Senator Pat Toomey was in the W Island studios today taping an upcoming episode of The Storm. Senator Toomey spoke about Alzheimer's, helping our veterans, and much more. The senator took a few minutes to speak with us about his work on Alzheimer's research. This is uh, just a terribly devastating disease. Uh, as, as you know, um, it's 100% it's fatal. We don't know the cause. We have no cure. We don't, don't even have a treatment. And it affects so many people. It affects my family. It affects almost every family. So I just think we ought to be putting more resources into finding a cure. I don't think that Alzheimer's gets resources that are uh, in proportion to the magnitude and the devastation of this disease. So I'm working to try to change that. Uh, we've got to find a cure, and the sooner we do, the better. Toomey had introduced a bill that passed the House and the Senate that would allow the TSA to hand over items that were left behind and not claimed to veterans, items like sneakers and clothing. I have a number of initiatives where I'm trying to, trying to help veterans. You know, uh, veterans returning from the recent wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have um, a higher unemployment rate than the population as a whole, and that's terrible. These are folks who, they're, they're skilled, they've been trained, they understand teamwork and, and completing a mission, they're patriotic, they're just a wonderful resource. They should be at the top of the list for recruits for any workplace. Toomey believes that we should help our veterans in any way possible. I'm trying to develop ways to get a better match for the skill set of a returning veteran with whatever job opportunities are out there, make sure veterans are aware of the various services available to them. So um, there's a lot more we need to do because um, just terrific Americans who've made a big sacrifice for all of us. The final item we spoke about was a meeting that was held a few months ago in Hazleton with Senator Toomey and Representative Lou Barletta on the future of the Toby Hanna Army Depot. The important thing is that this is a really, really valuable resource for the U.S. Um, Department of Defense. Uh, the technology, the capabilities that are at Toby Hanna, they're not replicated anywhere else in the country. So uh, it's my hope that we'll be able to continue to grow that facility. It provides an indispensable service. This episode of The Storm will air on September 10th here and only here on WYLN. Reporting for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Gary Perna. Wilkes-Barre City Municipal Affairs Manager Drew McLaughlin has left his position at the mayor's office. He will be attending law school at the Penn State University Dickinson School of Law. He said that leaving his position was bittersweet, but he looks forward to serving the community as a member of the bar. He also stated that, quote, my time at City Hall has been rewarding and certainly educational. We accomplished many great things for the city, but more work remains to be done, unquote. August 29th, the Hazleton Area Cougars will have their first game of the season. In addition, the Hazleton Area Marching Band will make their big debut on the field. WYLN's Abby Piskel has more on this story. As the school year approaches, the Hazleton Area Marching Cougars are preparing for their up-and-coming marching season. Today, the students hit the field on their first day of band camp. The theme for this year's field show is based off music from the movie Avatar. Hazleton Area High School Band Director Neil Fort explains more about the show. Yes, uh, this year's field show is based on the movie Avatar, so we're doing some three selections from the soundtrack of Avatar. So we have some costuming we're working on, flag work, uh, the kids of course working on the music and the marching and uh, visuals. Um, we're going to have some props and things that will make the, an exciting uh, entertainment package. Um, we're doing all, you know, looking to perform, forward to perform at all the football games. Um, and also get out and do some competitions uh, starting in October. The students are working hard on their show with the help of senior drum major Mike Seaman, who instructs the band on a student leadership level. Well, I have to conduct, uh, you know, I have to bring the band to attention when they walk out into, march out onto the field, and, you know, I have to evaluate how their performance is, you know, their musicianship, 
and pass it along to the directors as well. So. Music and marching are not the only talents that inhabit the organization. Color Guard Captain Rachel Jones tells us just what sort of dynamic the guard gives. Color Guard is uh, kind of like the uh, like the color to the band. We bring out every emphasis that the band makes and we make it pop with a little color, little show of things. It's, it's like the color of the band. It's pretty fun. Band members tell us that they are ready for their opening performance at Harmon Guys Stadium as the Cougars take on the Coughlin Crusaders on August 29th. After weeks of long practice sessions, the Hazleton area marching Cougars will be able to display their talents here at Harmon Guys Stadium, where the stands will be filled with fans ready to cheer and take on the up-and-coming season. In Hazleton, for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Abby Piskel. Beginning on August 18th, the Hazleton Public Transit will be running a revised Wilkes-Barre route. Buses will run Monday through Saturday with new times to accommodate service to Public Square. The new schedules can be picked up at the Church Street Station in Hazleton. It will also be available Tuesday, August 12th on the Wilkes-Barre Transit bus. One may also be mailed to you by calling 570-459-5414. Many in Hollywood and across the country are saddened by the sudden loss of Oscar winner and comedian Robin Williams. Authorities say the actor's cause of death was suicide, and although he has not, it has not been confirmed, his publicist says Williams has been suffering from severe depression. According to a statement from the Marion County Coroner, they received a 911 call at 11.55 a.m., and Williams was pronounced dead at 12.02 p.m. The Sheriff's Office Coroner Division suspects the death to be suicide due to asphyxia, but an investigation must be completed before a final determination is made. Williams won an Oscar for his supporting role in Goodwill Hunting. He had recently signed on for a sequel to Mrs. Doubtfire. Williams rose to fame while playing Mork the Alien in the TV show Mork and Mindy. He is survived by his wife Susan and children. Williams was 63 years old. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. What a weekend to be outside here in northeastern Pennsylvania. And hopefully all that good weather continues into our work week. Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacic is standing by live outside in the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center with the latest on our forecast. Joe, what can our viewers expect weather-wise this week? Well, we have something that we have not seen for quite some time across our region. And I'm sure you probably know what that is. I'm not going to give it away just yet, but... Tell you what, it is cool, it is comfortable, a little bit of a breeze right here. Across the northeast right now, things are fairly quiet right now, but we do have some changes to talk about in our forecast. And like I said, something we have not seen for quite some time. I'll explain what that is. No, it's not snow if you're thinking of snow. <laughs> we'll talk what we can expect coming up next. Are you having a party? Choose Catering by Whitetail for your next event. They offer on-site and off-site catering for all occasions. Barbecues, picnics, corporate functions, reunions, friendly get-togethers, graduation parties, any event you're hosting. Chef Tom will prepare the best for your guests. Call Chef Tom at 570-384-2314. Carryout catering is also available. Choose Catering by Whitetail for your next event. Hi, I'm Liz Tolan. I'd like to invite you to the second annual COPS event to be held September 13th at the Butler Township Community Center in Drums. The event, which will consist of a 5K run, a 5K walk, a kids' fun run, DJ, free cookout for the community craft show, tricky trays, and much more will benefit Butler, Sugarloaf, West Hazleton, Hazleton, and Cunningham Police Departments. When you call these men and women for help, they'll be there for you. Won't you take one day out of your busy schedule to be there for them? Bring the entire family to Forks Family Restaurant for one of the best casual dining experiences. Forks Family Restaurant, Route 940 outside of Whitehaven, serves a wide variety of dishes from fresh American and Mediterranean cuisine. Forks Family Restaurant has daily specials and a fully stocked bar for an intimate night out or a gathering for the whole family. It's Forks Family Restaurant, Route 940, just outside of Whitehaven, a half mile from exit 273 off of Interstate 80, open seven days a week. 
a winning smile. It's not the secret to success, but it sure helps. Protect your smile by visiting Dr. Weiss for complete dental services. Dr. Weiss offers a full-service denture laboratory on-premises, offering dentures in one day. Three dentists, four hygienists, and a team of caring technicians and assistants specializing in quality dentures and repairs, complete general dentistry, extractions, cleaning, and caps. Dr. Weiss, where you can have new dentures in one day. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. WYLN TV 35 is looking to hire a highly motivated, energetic salesperson for the Hazleton and surrounding areas. Call Liz Tolan, 570-459-1869, extension 1366. And welcome back. Well, not a bad day across our area today. The sunshine mixed with some clouds. But we're going to be changing that forecast around as we go into tomorrow and as we go into tomorrow night specifically. But we got some very warm air we dealt with today. Pretty nice across our region. Overall, really can't complain. But I will tell you one thing. We're going to have those changes in our forecast tomorrow and as we head into tomorrow night. And like I said, something we have not seen for quite some time, a, a decent amount of rain. I think we're going to overspread our area as we go into tomorrow and uh, tomorrow nine as the system from the west makes its way toward the east. Live 35 Skycast Doppler, nothing to show you right now across our area. We are quiet across northeastern Pennsylvania. No precipitation to speak of just yet, but that's going to change heading into tomorrow. Our live Lehigh tire conditions outside our station in Hazleton, 65 degrees. Pressure coming in at 30.07 inches of mercury. And so far since the midnight hour, we have been dry. Temperature-wise this morning, generally 50s and 60s. Daytime high is actually getting up in most areas into the 80s. Temperature-wise right now, 67 in New Angola, 71 in Berwick, 71 in Bloomsburg, 69 in Monoy City, and 70 degrees in Danville. Satellites and radar, uh, you got the precipitation out toward the west, and that's going to spread toward the east as we start going into tomorrow. And tomorrow night, we'll have some of that rain overspreading our area. We'll see some breaks in the rain from time to time, but before all is said and done, even as we go into our Wednesday morning, some of that rain could be heavy at times. And we could be looking at a, a decent amount of rain out of this next system and that's something we have not seen uh, a, a good soaking rain I mean we've seen some thunderstorms producing a lot of rain in just a short amount of time period you don't like that because a lot of that is just runoff and doesn't allow itself to seep into the ground this is going to be different we're actually going to see that rain and quite a bit of it we may be looking at one inch one and a half inches maybe some areas close to two inches before all is said and done this takes us to the midnight hour on Thursday so some pretty decent rain heading in our direction as we go into tomorrow, tomorrow night. Extended forecast looking like this over the next uh, couple of days. Still some leftover showers maybe for Wednesday and then uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It looks like it should be dry. Maybe a few showers around for Sunday and not looking bad for Monday. We want to thank Washco's Pharmacy for sponsoring our evening Pennsylvania lottery numbers. A daily 115, the big four, 2624. The Quinto number is 16421 and the cash 5, 3, 9, 11, 19, and 31. More late edition coming up after the break. Our U.S. patent, recognizing our innovative designs and features. So we're celebrating by giving you an exclusive mystery gift on today's orders. 
Mighty Bite Hand 5. Woo! Oh, yeah. Mighty Bite's revolutionary bite marks, scent sticks, swimming fins, and custom weighting and rattle system give it the erratic action of an injured baitfish. It's a fact. Fish are attracted to light. Now get the bite at night with our new UFO Glow Kit. Land trophy fish of all species. The Mighty Bite fishing system with over 100 pieces is yours for only $19.95. But wait, we'll even send you our Fishing Secrets Easy Guide and new one-hour DVD free. Call right now and we'll also send you our incredible UFO Glow Kit. That's three free gifts for you. And as a bonus, we'll include our new custom Big Fish Trophy Kit. Order now. That's four gifts, so call 1-800-339-6068, 1-800-339-6068, or visit buymightybite.com. Hey everyone, want some close to home fun? Join the Keystone Active Zone Passport Program to create your own backyard adventure exploring parks, trails, and events. It's fun, easy, and it's free. This year's passport has more than 30 stops. Enjoy Riverfest in Wilkesbury and Pittston. Discover the DNL Trail and more. Register at kazpassport.org. Visit as many stops as you want. Each stop has a question. Find the answers and log them in on the website. Start exploring today. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi diamond contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi electric, Mr. Slim ductless heating and cooling system. Mr. Slim systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Wouldn't it be great if everything in life were fast? Fast like a cable modem. Call Service Electric now and get the fastest internet in town. Plus, when you sign up today, you'll also get free installation. Experience the blazing speed of Service Electric high-speed internet service. Your internet will never be the same. The 2014 high school softball season may be long gone as today was the first day of fall practices, but three area players from the Hazleton Area Lady Cougars softball team continued to reap the benefits of a spectacular past year. Juniors Abby Sachs and Lexi Wolk and sophomore Celine Podlesny were recently named to the 2014 National Fast Pitch Coaches Association all regional team. Sachs, who is the first Lady Cougar to make the association's first team, actually took home a 534 batting average this year and only made one error at her position in the outfield. She was also named co-most valuable player for the Wyoming Valley Conference and made second team all state. Now on to Lexi Wolk. She was named to the region's second team this past season. She brought in a team high 31 runs with her 467 batting average. She hit five doubles, two triples, and three homers. The Lady Cougar was also named to the first team in both the state and the conference. Some nice catches here. This one's my favorite. Dive and catch by Lexi Wolk there. Then there is sophomore pitcher Celine Podlesny, who was also named to the all-regional second team. In the circle, she won 13 games, lost only one, striking out 52 batters along the way. As for the offense, Podlesny batted 411 with 25 RBIs. She was the other half of the co-MVP for the Wyoming Valley Conference with Sacks and was also honored on the all-state all team. Congratulations to each of those girls on their honors. Make sure to look out for the trio once again next year. Central Pennsylvania will soon come, soon come alive as the 2014 Little League World Series opens up later this week and our home state will have a little more to cheer for as the Mid-Atlantic region will be represented by a team from Center City, Philadelphia. The Taney Youth Baseball Association team advanced yesterday behind a huge performance by Monet Davis on the mound. She pitched a complete game shutout allowing only three hits against her opponents from Newark, Delaware. The 13-year-old will be the 
will be only the 17th girl to play in the Little League World Series since its inception over 60 years ago. The annual tournament is slated to begin in South Williamsport on Thursday. After releasing outfielder Tony Gwynn Jr. last month, the Phillies re-signed him about a week ago, this time to a minor league contract. Today, he joined the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs roster and held down the center field position in their game against the Columbus Clippers, which is going on right now. In his first at-bat, he knocked in Russ Kanzler with a sack fly to center field, and the Iron Pigs took the one nothing lead. We will have that Iron Pigs final score in just a few minutes when I come back with more sports. But until then, Ann Gownley has more of your top stories coming up next. Sunday night on WYLN from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. for hard-hitting, high-flying, non-stop action as only Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling High Voltage can bring you. That's Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling every Sunday night on WYLN. I'll see you in the ring. WYLN TV 35, first in live sports. Hi, I'm Ron Jaworski. For the best in local TV sports, watch WYLN TV 35. WYLN TV 35 has it covered. Hi, my name is Vince Papelli. Uh, I'm a former Philadelphia Eagle wide receiver and special teams guy. And for local sports coverage, I watch only WYLN 35. Enjoy the great outdoors at the Whitetail Preserve Shooting Ranges Trap, Skeet, and Sporting Clays course. No waiting and no lines. First time shooting? Whitetail Preserve employs certified instructors to help you get the most out of your experience. Hungry? The restaurant at Whitetail has a great menu to satisfy and offers catering for all occasions. Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, approximately 13 miles west of Hazleton and just one hour from Allentown, Reading, and the Delaware Water Gap. 118 Boulevard Road, just off the Rockland Road, near Rockland, 384-2314. WYLNCA 35's children's programming is designed with the specific purpose of serving the educational and informational needs of children. In compliance with FCC guidelines, a copy of the children's programming report is on file for public inspection at WYLN, 1057 East 10th Street, Hazleton, PA, during normal business hours, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. An accused shooter is scheduled to head to trial in Luzerne County Court. 22-year-old Adamus Aries allegedly shot 19-year-old Angel Suarez Villalobos to death after an argument on February 23rd of 2013 in Hazleton. Jury selection is underway for the criminal homicide trial. Attorneys Allison Kazmarski and Hugh Taylor will be defending Arias. Assistant District Attorney Jill Matthews and Chester Dudick will be prosecuting the case. The trial will be heard by Judge David Lupus. No word when the trial will officially begin until jury selection is completed. A supervisor's meeting was held in Hazel Township where a local water problem, road repairs, and a new business opening were topics of discussion. WYLN's Julie Stefanovich was at tonight's meeting and has the story. The Hazel Township supervisors met this evening to give the public an update on the meeting that was held last week to discuss the Stockton water situation. Solicitor Charles Pedry said that PennVest recommended a new project called White Knight. It would allow the Hazleton Water Authority to apply for grants and loans. It would help the agency get funding to incorporate smaller areas such as Stockton. Without the funding, it would not be economically feasible to run a water line through the area. We also spoke with Supervisor Bill Gallagher on the matter. Just a discussion, informational meeting to see what options would be available uh, if there's grant money out there and both the Department of Agriculture and PennVest are going to be looking and to see what kind of funding we would be able to receive and pass over to the Hazleton City Authority first to do an engineering study to see the feasibility and cost of, uh, of doing a water project in Stockton and then in turn seeing if there would be money available to do the Stockton project but you're probably one to two years away on on anything that would be uh, locked in stone. Gallagher also gave us an update on the township summer road projects and the progress of a new car dealership that is set to open up in Hazel Township. But, uh, we got Hazel Township Boulevard done from uh, th Route 309 down to Mountain City. 
uh, and we also did uh, 23rd Street from uh, Route 309 to Vine Street, which is probably one of the worst roads and one of the heaviest travel because of the high school and the school buses. So the, both of those roads were done. That was our biggest project this year. Uh, our road crew and subcontractors are still working on various areas. We're moving into the uh, hardware, uh, into Hollywood right now uh, with all the traffic uh, being used, people trying to avoid the beltway. They've started to put a... Uh, we're starting to have problems on Hollywood, so we're going to be doing some milling and paving on Hollywood Road uh, down behind All Face, so I would expect some delays down there if you're using that. started to break ground for the, uh, the new car dealerships. Uh, the contractors are out there clearing the trees and starting to do uh, the necessary drainage work. I believe that uh, they're hoping to get a few of the buildings in before the, the weather turns. The next supervisor's meeting is scheduled for September 8th at 6 p.m. in the Commons Building. In Hazel Township, for WY Lensley Edition, I'm Julie Stefanovich. LAG towing owner Leo Glodzik filed a list of reasons last week as to why he deserves to have his conviction overturned. Now, Luzerne County prosecutors gave reasons why they believe a judge should deny his appeal. Glodzik was suspended at, as Wilkes-Barre's exclusive towing contractor on May 31st of 2013. He was arrested on theft charges from pocketing bait money during an FBI sting operation in January of 2013. He was convicted on the theft charges in May in Luzerne County Court. He is free on bail pending his appeal. Laboratory results are still pending on a man who died after Tamaqua police tasered him last week. 38-year-old Jose Polino Jr. died while en route to St. Luke's Hospital Miners Campus in Coaldale on Friday, August 8th. According to police, Polino was running around the parking lot of Fakely's Mini Market Friday around 4 a.m. shouting obscenities, then ran across the street to the Sunoco parking lot. Police say Polino was non-compliant and continued to act aggressively, and that's when they tasered him. Sewell County Coroner Dr. David Moylan said an autopsy conducted at Lehigh Valley Hospital Cedarcrest was inconclusive. Polino's skin was examined extensively looking for hemorrhaging. Toxicology and microscopic samples were taken and sent to a laboratory. Investigators are still waiting on those results to determine the manner of death. The Pennsylvania State Police Major Case Team is continuing to investigate this incident. Saturday morning, Hazleton City Police were called to CNP store for an armed robbery. According to police, a man walked into the store wearing a Spider-Man mask and brandished a handgun. The man is described as being dark-skinned, standing 5 foot 9. The male then fled the area on foot. No one was hurt during the incident. Police say he did get away with an undetermined amount of money. Anyone with information on this armed robbery is being asked to call Hazleton Police by dialing 911. Just after 6 o'clock Monday morning, Hazleton police responded to a robbery in progress. According to the victims, they were approached by three Hispanic males in the parking lot near 51 West Juniper Street. One suspect pointed a handgun and removed property from the victims. The suspects then fled in a white color sedan south on Wyoming Street. Anyone with information on this incident is asked to call Hazleton police at 570-459-4940. A 28-year-old man from Brockton died over the weekend after his motorcycle crashed in Rush Township. Police say Zachary Hess lost control of his Honda motorcycle Friday evening on Lafayette Avenue just east of Sean Avenue in hometown. Hess was taken to St. Luke's Hospital Miners Campus in Coaldale with serious injuries. He was pronounced dead in the emergency room. According to police, Hess was traveling east towards his sister's house in Lake Hotto after leaving his cousins just a short distance away. Witnesses, including Hess's brother, saw sparks coming from his motorcycle. Hess was thrown from the motorcycle after striking several trees. Hess was not wearing a helmet at the time of the crash. The accident is still under investigation. Shots were fired into a home on Chester Street in Wilkes-Barre shortly after midnight on Sunday. A 16-year-old male told police that he was on the porch when a black Dodge sedan with four occupants exited the vehicle and approached the house. The boy went inside the house, locked the doors, and called police. He then heard gunshots and the glass of the front storm door breaking. Authorities found shell casings at the scene, which were then processed as evidence. A Nanticoke woman has been charged with stabbing her boyfriend during a domestic dispute. According to police, 23-year-old Beth Ann Bartle was arrested and charged with aggravated assault and two counts of simple assault. Police say just after 4 a.m. Saturday, they were dispatched to Agosnia Drive after Bartle stabbed Sean Rosansky in the hand. The top of his hand was bleeding when police found him outside an apartment. Rosansky told police that Bartle stabbed him. Police found Bartle asleep in the bed, and when she woke up, she told police that she 
she had enough and wanted him to leave. She told police that when she when he refused to leave, she got the knife and cut him. Bardo was arraigned Saturday morning and released on her own recognizance. Rosansky was treated at an area hospital for his wound. It was a scary situation late Saturday night as a car smashed into a house in the city of Hazleton. Hazleton police arrived on location on West Chapel Street to find the operator of the Chevy Trailblazer had fled on foot, leaving the SUV behind. The vehicle struck the side of the house, causing some cosmetic damage to the outside. Hazleton police were on location and assisted by the Hazleton Fire Department. If you have any information helpful to police, you are asked to dial 911. A 28-year-old man from Brockton overread his motorcycle in West Rush Township. Police say Zachary Hess lost control. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry. One second. United States Senator. Now, it's United States Senator Pat Toomey is working on a bill that will help veterans across the country. Today, our Gary Perta spoke with Senator Toomey about his efforts in Washington. United States Senator Pat Toomey was in the WYLN studios today taping an upcoming episode of The Storm. Senator Toomey spoke about Alzheimer's, helping our veterans, and much more. The senator took a few minutes to speak with us about his work on Alzheimer's research. This is uh, just a terribly devastating disease. Uh, as, as you know, um, it's 100% it's fatal. We don't know the cause. We have no cure. We don't, don't even have a treatment. And it affects so many people. It affects my family. It affects almost every family. So I just think we ought to be putting more resources into finding a cure. I don't think that Alzheimer's gets resources that are uh, in proportion to the magnitude and the devastation of this disease. So I'm working to try to change that. Uh, we've got to find a cure, and the sooner we do, the better. Toomey had introduced a bill that passed the House and the Senate that would allow the TSA to hand over items that were left behind and not claimed to veterans, items like sneakers and clothing. I have a number of initiatives where I'm trying to, trying to help veterans. You know, uh, veterans returning from the recent wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have um, a higher unemployment rate than the population as a whole, and that's terrible. These are folks who, they're, they're skilled, they've been trained, they understand teamwork and, and completing a mission, they're patriotic, they're just a wonderful resource. They should be at the top of the list for recruits for any workplace. Toomey believes that we should help our veterans in any way possible. I'm trying to develop ways to get a better match for the skill set of a returning veteran with whatever job opportunities are out there, make sure veterans are aware of the various services available to them. So um, there's a lot more we need to do because um, just terrific Americans who've made a big sacrifice for all of us. The final item we spoke about was a meeting that was held a few months ago in Hazleton with Senator Toomey and Representative Lou Barletta on the future of the Toby Hanna Army Depot. The important thing is that this is a really, really valuable resource for the U.S. Um, Department of Defense. Uh, the technology, the capabilities that are at Toby Hanna, they're not replicated anywhere else in the country. So uh, it's my hope that we'll be able to continue to grow that facility. It provides an indispensable service. This episode of The Storm will air on September 10th here and only here on WYLN. Reporting for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Gary Perna. A one-car crash took the life of a 20-year-old man this morning in Denison Township. The man was traveling southbound along State Route 437 when he crossed the center line and overcorrected crashing into a guardrail near Dixon Road. The vehicle flipped over the rail before coming to a stop. The accident happened around 5 a.m. Police said that speed definitely played a role in the crash. Both lanes of Route 437 were closed to traffic between Tunnel and Honey Hole Roads while police investigated the incident. The road was reopened around 9.30 a.m. Authorities have not released the name of the victim pending notification to his family. Well, in other news today, on August 29th, the Hazleton Area Cougars will have their first game of the season. In addition, the Hazleton Area Marching Band will make their big debut on the field. WYLN's Abby Piskel has more on the story. As the school year approaches, the Hazleton Area Marching Cougars are preparing for their up-and-coming marching season. Today, the students hit the field on their first day of band camp. The theme for this year's field show is based off music from the movie Avatar. Hazleton Area High School Band Director Neil Fort explains more about the show. Yes, uh, this year's field show is based on the movie Avatar, so we're doing some three selections from the soundtrack of Avatar. So we have some costuming we're working on, flag work, uh, the kids of course working on the music and the marching and uh, visuals. Um, we're going to have some props and things that will make the, an exciting uh, 
entertainment package. Um, we're doing all, you know, looking to perform forward to perform at all the football games um, and also get out and do some competitions uh, starting in October. The students are working hard on their show with the help of senior drum major Mike Seaman, who instructs the band on a student leadership level. Well, I have to conduct, uh, you know, I have to bring the band to attention when they walk out onto, march out onto the field. And, you know, I have to evaluate how their performance is, you know, their musicianship, and pass it along to the directors as well. So. Music and marching are not the only talents that inhabit the organization. Color Guard Captain Rachel Jones tells us just what sort of dynamic the Guard gives. Color Guard is uh, kind of like the... Uh, like the color to the band, we bring out every emphasis that the band makes and we make it pop with a little color, little show of things. It's, it's like the color of the band. It's pretty fun. Band members tell us that they are ready for their opening performance at Harmon Guys Stadium as the Cougars take on the Coughlin Crusaders on August 29th. After weeks of long practice sessions, the Hazleton area marching Cougars will be able to display their talents here at Harmon Guys Stadium, where the stands will be filled with fans ready to cheer and take on the up-and-coming season. In Hazleton, for WILN's Late Edition, I'm Abby Piskel. And that's a look at tonight's top stories. Coming up next, Beth Bensinger is back with more sports here on Late Edition. Plus, she'll have all the minor and major league scores of the night. But first, so let's head back outside to the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center with Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacek, who's standing by live. Joe? Well, a little bit breezy out here and uh, cool, comfortable, low humidity values and some rain on the way. Live 35 Skycast Doppler will show you where the rain is right now. And it's out there. Western part of Pennsylvania is where the rain is right now. I'll be letting you know exactly when that rain will be getting here coming up in a little bit. For all your projects, large and small, Bedrock Gardens has it all. Spring is on the way. Plan your summer project today. Rubber mulch. We're curving to match. Lots of color choices to pick from. Wallstone Natural Stone delivered right to you. Great selections of rich colored quality mulch that will look wonderful all season long. Pebbles River Rock Brick Chips. If you need it, we have it. Finish off your fabulous outdoor space with our quality patio furniture and easy to assemble fire kits. Screening and everything you need for your summer projects. Delivery available or just stop by and we'll load you up. Bedrock Gardens, locally owned and operated. Call today. All you want to do is wrap up uh, a sandwich or leftovers, uh, but dealing with plastic wrap and foil uh, leaves you in a tangled uh, mess. Hi, Mark Hill here for Raptastic, the super smart dispenser that lets you pull, press, and wrap just like that. Simply load in your wrap and you're ready to roll. Plastic wrap, foil wrap, wax paper, and more. Raptastic cuts perfectly every time, so there's no waste. Raptastic has a safer hidden stainless steel cutter that cuts only the wrap and only when you need it to. Ready to change rolls? It's spring loaded, so it's easy out and easy in. Raptastic is dishwasher safe and fits right in the drawer. Put Raptastic to work in your home today for just $10.99. Call right now and we'll send you a second Raptastic as a bonus. Just pay separate processing and handling. As a special gift, I'm going to fill your Raptastics with a roll of foil and a roll of plastic absolutely free. You get two Raptastics, two rolls of wrap, a huge value for just $10.99. Here's how to order. When severe weather hits our area, the WILN Weather Center brings you precise weather information you need to plan your day. And now you can get the latest weather conditions online anytime at WILNTV.com. Utilizing the latest technology, meteorologist Joe Garbacek brings you the most accurate weather information available, including webcams to view current road conditions and detailed maps of our area. For a full detailed and accurate daily weather report, watch WILN Weather with Joe Garbacek online anytime at WILNTV.com. Welcome to Robert Stevens Face and Body, Hazleton's Complete Skin Care Center. Here, our licensed specialists will consult with you to discuss your skin care needs, rejuvenate you with our special facial treatments, and apply gentle, relaxing massages to melt your tension away using all state-of-the-art technical treatments and superior skin products. So call today and let the transformation begin at Robert Stevens Face and Body, 788-7546. 
Join us this week on Women's Day. It is the season five finale. We're going to talk about how you can make a lot of little changes that will make a big difference. Antonio from Studio 93 will be on with us. He's going to show you how. We're going to cook with Kathy one last time. Wait till you see the cool treats she has for you. One last scoop of ice cream from Scoopers in the Valley. We'll tell you who won that great gift certificate from Robert Stevens. Got one more giveaway. And I've got a little surprise for my co-hosts. It's all coming up. Season finale of Women Today. Join us. Yesterday, 25-year-old Irish golfer Rory McIlroy won the PGA Championship, shooting 16 under overall. It's his fourth major win of his career and second just this year. He's the fourth youngest golfer to ever achieve the accomplishment behind Tiger Woods, Jack Nicklaus, and Bobby Jones. Yeah, it, it really does. Um, you know, I, I said, you know, I thought winning the Open Championship a few weeks ago had sort of put me on a higher level in this game um, but then to you know to win a fourth major here uh, to be one behind Phil one behind Seve level with Ernie uh, level with Raymond Floyd I guess um, I mean I, I never thought I'd, I'd get this far at, at 25 years of age so it's uh, it's something that I'm just gonna have to you know come to terms with in a way and just you know it's yeah I mean you know, I was I was happy being a two-time major champion coming into this year, and all of a sudden I'm a four-time major champion and going for the career Grand Slam at Augusta in 292 days, 291 days, whatever it is. Not that I'm counting, um, but yeah, you know, it's it's just been an incredible run of golf, and um, you know, I just couldn't couldn't be more proud of myself or, or happier with where my game's at. Phil Mickelson came out of the championship in the runner-up position, shooting a 66 yesterday. It's the ninth time he finished second in a major. After the tournament left, he talked about how he really needs to focus in on his game in the next few months as he has his eye on a few more majors next season. So it was a fun day for me to make some birdies and, and move up early so that I had a good chance on the back nine. And um, I'm disappointed in, in the outcome. I thought that, uh, you know, had I been able to uh, finish those last five, six holes strong, could have totally flipped the way I look at this year. But um, now it's, uh, you know, I've got some regrouping to do these next three or four months. It's, I've got some glaring areas in my game that I've got to work on. And um, I feel like... If I'm able to uh, continue to be uh, strong and healthy and, uh, and, and sharp in these areas of my game, I should have four or five good years that I really want to focus in on. Now, as promised before, a look at your Iron Pigs game tonight against the Columbus Clippers. It's a four, they win 4-0 for Lehigh Valley. Gwynn still sits with that one RBI, and Russ Kanzler continued his hot streak. He had a two-run home run. Also, see how the Rail Riders fared along with all your Major League scores, and then stay tuned after the break because Joe Robotics coming back next. Home Care, the health care that you need in the comfort and privacy of your own home. At All Care Home Care, our caring and compassionate staff of skilled nurses, occupational speech, physical therapists, dietitian, social worker, and home health aides will give you the professional care you need. Call 459-3002. With All Care Home Care, you will feel so much better and be able to do so much more. Remember, it's still your choice for your care. Call us and we'll be there. 
I'm Brian Anderson, and I'd like to invite you to be a part of something special. USA Cares is a nonprofit organization helping military families with emergency financial assistance. We help prevent evictions and foreclosures, utilities from being turned off, and we put food on the table for our nation's heroes. USA Cares is looking to form a chapter in your area. Go to usacares.org. USA Cares, making a difference in the lives of military families. During these changing times, is your insurance program up to date? I'm local Allstate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. Our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? The Marriott Fairfield Inn and Suites of Hazleton awaits you. Our Fairfield Inn provides you with just the travel experience you're looking for. Meeting room space, jacuzzi suites, indoor pool, whirlpool, and dry sauna. The Residence Inn is perfect for temporary housing in the greater Hazleton area. An all-suite property with evening reception, sport court, fire pit, and outdoor grill area. At the Hampton Inn, enjoy our on-site lounge and restaurant, outdoor pool with spacious deck, and spectacular valley views, and a hot breakfast daily. Whichever property you choose, you can be certain of clean, modern facilities, friendly staff, and impeccable service. Things move a little slower here in DSLville. Slow pitch softball is big here. Really big. There's not a fast food restaurant in town. Zero. Get the most out of the internet. Get Service Electric High Speed Internet. Call Service Electric today to sign up. Ho, 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 ho. Slow down. Tourists. This week on Warrior Summit Outdoors, Eric travels to Musick for the final upgrades on the Jeep. Then it's off to Roush Creek Off-Road Park in Schuylkill County to put it through its paces and have a little off-road fun with decorated Iraq War veteran Brian Anderson. That's this week on Warrior Summit Outdoors. Well, many times across the Northeast, we deal with some hot, muggy, just uncomfortable nights, but nothing like in Phoenix, Arizona, 1994. How would you like to deal with a nighttime low temperature of only 89 degrees? You betcha that you better have that air on with it being that hot or the fans running. It, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive for an overnight low. Well, this year so far, this summer, not just northeastern and central Pennsylvania, but a, a lot of the area uh, throughout the nation, it's been kind of cool. There you can see some of the uh, select cities from Pittsburgh through Detroit, uh, New York City, Kansas City, Portland. Average days of 90 or better, right through August 11th. You can see the statistics on the right. But take a look at what's in blue, the statistics on the left. Eh, not much going on, We're pretty much with the exception of uh, uh, Seattle, Washington. The rest of the numbers you can see are lower. So it's not just us that we haven't been dealing with an extremely hot summer, but a lot of the nation been dealing with some uh, cool conditions. Boy, look at Live 35 Skycast Doppler. We have some rain heading in our direction. And a good soaking rain, I think, before all is said and done. We could be looking at anywhere between one to maybe two inches of rain. At 65 degrees, our live Lehigh tire conditions outside our station in Hazleton. And so far, we've been dry since midnight. Temperature-wise, 73, Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport, 67 in Mount Pocono, 65 in State College. Up in the Wyoming Valley area, temperatures holding in the mid to upper 60s to lower 70s. Satellite and radar got the clouds thickening and increasing across the northeast and we're going to be looking at the rain over spreading our area as we progress through tomorrow and as we even go into tomorrow night, maybe a few leftover showers as we go into our Wednesday. Some of the rain could be heavy at times. We see some breaks maybe from time to time from the rain, 
But again, it's been a while since we've had a, a, a soaking rain that lasted for a, a longer period of time. We've had showers and thunderstorms, but we know very quickly they produce a lot of rain in just a short amount of time period, and that's it. This is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a slow-moving system, so it's going to give us a healthy amount of precipitation with it. But in terms of temperatures, like I showed you the statistic earlier, Boy, I tell you what, it just, we just can't get the heat. The heat is out toward the west. In fact, the rest of this week, temperature-wise, it's going to feel more September-like across our area. Well, here's a look at the extended forecast. You can see the numbers for yourself. Just how cool they're going to be. Now, because of the rain around tomorrow and... Uh, the ickiness, if you will, we, we really need it because it's been dry. So we cannot say anything bad about the rain, but it's only going to be in the 60s, I think. It's going to be hard to break 70, especially in the higher elevations. 70 for Wednesday, maybe a few leftover showers around, and you know it won't be until probably early next week that we see at least a little bit of a warming trend. We get to near 80 degrees, but other than that, temperatures being below it. Look at those nighttime lows, 50, 51 degrees. There'll be some cool nights ahead. You're going to be able to keep those windows open. Or break out the sweatshirts. You know what? Yeah, that's not funny. It, it the quilt. Definitely. <laughs> Get the them quilt. out of the basement, out of the bags, wherever you have them. Because mm -hmm. it looks like there's going to be some chilly nights ahead of us. But that rain tomorrow, I know we need it, but... Oh, it's been... Like I mean, look at the grass in our area and everything yeah. else. It's drying. It's... Uh, you know, you don't want to see those dry conditions because that can lead to yeah. forest fires, brush fires, and all that stuff. So, well... I guess rain is a good thing at some time. Yeah, we need it. We haven't had much. All right. Thanks, Joe. Hey, for all of our top stories, you can check out our Facebook page, our like page, facebook.com slash WYLN, late edition, news at 10. Have a great night, everyone. We'll be back here tomorrow night at 10 o'clock.